The survival of the Jewish people is also predicted there in the book of Leviticus and in the book of Deuteronomy, that despite all of these incredibly harsh and difficult and almost impossible things to live through, nonetheless we will survive. And not only will we survive, but we will also flourish. And this is a matter of historical record. The Jewish people have received all of the anger and all of the scorn of the Christian world and the Islamic world and continues to receive their scorn and their hatreds sometimes from the, the church, sometimes from the mosque. In this generation, it's mostly from the mosque, but hatred still remains. The Pope does not wish to accept the concept that there is going to be a Jewish state in Israel, that this is an independent state set up by God himself. I don't believe in the holiness of the Jewish state as it is today. I believe in the holiness of the Jewish Yishuv, of the return of Jewish people to the land of Israel. And this has been foretold, and this will come more and more in the future until the coming of the Mashiach, the coming of the Messiah. But we have to understand the words of Tochacha, the words of rebuke, the curses, if you will. The curses in the Torah seem to be matters that are in the past, Matters that deal with the Holocaust that are too horrific to repeat. And even though Ahmadinejad would like to repeat them, today's Jews are not the cowering people of the ghetto, but people who are well armed and have learned to defend themselves. Despite the wishes of other people, including certain governing agencies of this country, to neutralize the power of the Jewish state. Jewish people will not submit to making themselves helpless once more before the nations of the world. And so, there will no, no longer be again a Holocaust, not at least without our armed resistance. But we have to understand the curses in their universal context. Well, you see, every element of the Torah is not just an element of history that once done belongs to the past, but rather every element of Torah, whether it's the story of Adam, a story of Noah, a story of Abraham, or the blessings or the curses that are mentioned in the Torah are of universal import, that they have a universal effect upon the future of the world at all times. What is the secret? What is the universal secret of the words of the Torah that are stated that appear to be horrific? At a time when a Holocaust will not come, what do these words which imply terrible destruction really mean? So I wish to tell you this following story. <clears throat> there was a man, his name was Nachum, really a great rabbi, but he was known belovedly as Nachum of Gimzo. And he was known to say the words Gam Zu Litova. That was why he was called Nachum Ish Gamzu even though there was a city called Gimzo, but he was also known as Gamzu because he would say Gamzu Litova, everything is for the good. And one time he was going on the road to Rome bringing a casket of jewels in order to appease the Roman monarch and robbers on the way took the jewels and replaced it with sand so he shouldn't understand that he had been robbed 
And when he came before the Roman emperor and opened up the casket, the box was filled with sand, dirt, and they wanted to take Nachum and make him a head shorter. And Elijah the prophet intervened and said, well, wait a second, maybe there's something to the sand. It's brought down in their holy books that Abraham used sand and threw it at his enemies and it became all kinds of missiles and destructive weapons of war. Well, let's try it. We've got a skirmish outside of Rome right now. Let's see if it works. And they took the casket and they used the the earth, the earth became missiles and elements of destruction against the enemies of Rome. And for this, Nachum was rewarded handsomely with jewels far greater than the amount of jewels that was stolen from him. And this brings us to a certain context, a certain idea. And that is, Nachum was a man who saw everything as coming from God. And as such, he would say, Gam Zulitova, this is also good. And the fact that he was going to be executed was also ultimately for the good. And therefore, even things that appear to be negative, he saw the goodness in them. And because he saw the goodness in them, God made it good in an open fashion. There are times when we're faced with difficulties. People lose their jobs. People are insecure. And people go and try to find other jobs and they try to learn what they can from the fact that they learn the jobs. What skills can they get? What investment can they put into themselves so that they become more marketable? What new thing can happen as a result? But if we were to take this lesson to heart that every negative at its core is positive, we wouldn't be overwhelmed. Not only wouldn't we be overwhelmed, but the net result of that acceptance from God that it is good actually can transform the whole situation into a positive one. I remember talking to a friend who had lost his secure job working in a hospital. He was the manager of a hospital, a big hospital in Detroit. And he was very, very down in the dumps. And his, one of his children had just entered university. And how was he going to pay for university education? He didn't even have a job. No security. Very, very little savings. How was he going to do this? How was he going to survive? I couldn't answer him except the standard answer. The Gamzu Latov. Sometimes we say whatever God does is for the best. And sometimes we say this is also for good. Most of us can't see the good in a negative. Well, this young man drew upon his experience and offered himself as a consultant to hospitals all over the state and in the region. And with a short period of time, he was making far more money than he would have had he remained as a manager of the hospital. And so instead of a curse, the loss of the job became a source of blessing. And that's the message of the curses. The curses really are a source of blessing, that they really bring us to a higher level of awareness, and that the Torah, which is the source of life of the Jew, will be so overwhelming that we won't be able to keep up with it, and because we won't be able to keep up with it, we will feel as if we are being oppressed and pursued by great oppressors because the demand to know and to love and the Torah and to study the Torah and to find out its truth will be so great that we can't keep up with it. And that's the secret of the curses. The curses